the historical perspective gives you uh, an idea of kind of how we got to where we are today on Newtown Creek. And now I will try to talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that are going on to bring the creek back to environmental and economic vibrancy, if that's a word, <laughs> with a group of teachers. <laughs> Good, okay. Um, so, one of, you probably have all heard of the Superfund designation that's been received by both Newtown Creek and uh, the Gowanus Canal. And we're going to, Katie's going to speak about that in a little bit, but basically they're, it, the, the federal Superfund designation is an indication of kind of the level of seriousness that, you know, when Mitch uh, talks about, you know, kind of going any further into the creek, it's, it's not just for dramatic effect. You know, it's also, I, I wear, when I give uh, interviews in the upper tributaries on Newtown Creek at times, I'm, after like five minutes of conversation, I will get a headache. And, you know, the problem is when you stop getting those headaches, you know, and so you can consider the environmental health impacts on the community of people who work daily on Newtown Creek, and then also the upland neighborhoods uh, that are, there's, there's a quite abrupt, uh, you know, as soon as the zoning changes, the housing pressures are right at the at the borderline, and there are communities that are that are in very close contact to where where we are right now. Right now, we're probably we're in you know a couple blocks away was what we would call East Williamsburg, and then a couple more blocks that way is what we would call Bushwick. And um, on, in particular, on the Brooklyn side, the residential communities are very close to the creek. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Uh, one of the programs that the Newtown Creek Alliance is involved in is called, is a planning initiative that's funded by the state called the Brownfield Opportunity Area. And is everybody, has anybody heard of Brownfield before this term? By show of hands. Yeah. So Brownfields are contaminated sites or potentially contaminated sites. And based on what we just heard, it's pretty safe to assume that the all of the properties along Newtown Creek are Brownfields, right? So that's about 400 properties. We're one of the largest brownfield opportunity area programs, uh, large, largest BOA areas out there, one of. I think we might have been beaten recently, but it's not a, <laughs> not a title that we were so attached to holding onto. But it's a very large area, so it's a very large planning process. Um, and it is a planning process that allows us to go property by property, look at the, the historic environmental impacts, look at the current economic uses, and think about the future, and think about what we can do that marries environmental remediation and the economic viability of this area. What we're looking at is the city's largest significant maritime area. So, and that's not changing anytime soon. A lot of the infrastructure that we see here is, is essential city infrastructure that is you know, that we, we don't foresee any rezoning or any, you know, there's definitely residential pressures on the on the upland side, but this waterway itself will be, will be used for manufacturing and industry, and that's something that we are, you know, that's something that we're involved in and improving. So, what happens when you look at the Newtown Creek in this perspective, right? So, the first thing that we've, we've probably noticed is the condition of the shoreline. So the highest and best use for these properties is for maritime transit. So uh, Mitch, Bre Mitch uh, mentioned earlier the importance of barging. So if you consider the, the industries that are active along the Newtown Creek, the waste industry, the aggregate industry, that's the cement guys and gravel and sand and all that material, um, and the scrap yards that we saw, we saw a couple scrap yards loading on the barges. These industries move material lots and lots and lots of material and one barge uh, on the water is equal to 70 trucks on a road and is also in similarly somewhere in between there would be like four train cars right so if in particular when you're thinking about the environmental impacts of upland communities um, making sure that the, the maritime transit on newtown creek is viable in the long term is a really really big deal so the, one of the things that we've been looking at in the bow is the condition of this shoreline. And we've, we, so we, I think we're in a pretty good spot to, to talk about the various conditions of the shoreline. So we, maybe if, if we're looking off the back of the bow, we can see a, an intact bulkhead, what I would describe as intact bulkhead. And then if we kind of turn around, 
so why are we pointing here? Is, I don't know my port from my daughter, I'm sorry. Port. Over here. <laughs> port? Port. Port. Off the port. So we can see, you know, a former bulkhead that's now eroded. And then, just a little bit more forward, between the two, we can see a naturalized, short, kind of fully naturalized shoreline. And while this isn't um, the ideal naturalized shoreline, it's quite mighty, which is an invasive species, and some tree of heaven, which is also kind of a, a, a really, really aggressive colonizer. Um, this is, this, this demonstrates for us that as a, a, a naturalized shoreline is possible in this waterway. So, Still, 
and so um, the impact on the water body is to deplete its oxygen content and to increase toxic loadings in the sediments. So there's a question. How much rain before the overflow actually occurs? So there's been, people have said one tenth of an inch of rain. Oh, this crap. Point. I've talked to people at DEP who say, you know, it's, it's just hard to say. Um, it, the, it depends on the drainage area that you're talking about. And actually, this is a good moment for me to talk about briefly. Um, one of the projects that New Town Creek Alliance is going to be working on with the Stormwater Infrastructure Matters Coalition, SMIM, is to study this issue. So we're going to work to put weather stations essentially on school rooftops. So this is, if this is something that you're interested in, I've given you my card at the beginning, and now you know why. <laughs> Please reach out to me. Um, to do weather monitoring, and also work with the DEP to do monitoring of the sewer, of the sewer outfalls themselves. And to hopefully get a finer resolution indication of the relationship between waterfall where and overflow where and how much. So this would be kind of the first thing of its kind, and the goal of it would be to create some form of public notification for people who use the waterways, um, like we were talking about earlier, you know, kayakers in particular, people who fish. Um, there's, there's not a lot of, you know, of course, recreation happening where we are right now, but CSOs are a citywide issue, and there's an awful lot of recreation going on, even just with the value of the county. So maybe this time next year ask me that question and then we'll maybe go ahead and go for you. swim beautifully as fast as a fish because they have no oil on their feathers. So between the herons and the egret, and there's clearly a lot of fish even this far up. I can describe the, the work going on in kind of 
just two buckets. One bucket that we call gray infrastructure, conventional engineering, and then the green infrastructure, or stormwater management bucket. And for a long time, the two have been kind of happening separately from one another. So the gray infrastructure involves something called the long-term control plan, and it involves the classical engineering approach of you know expanding the, the network of pipes, the capacity, you know, expanding the capacity of the system itself, and then building you know additional capacity in locations where, where it's possible. So think tanks basically at the end of the combined sewer overflow network that could be filled up in times of open and then pumped back through the sewer stream of plants. So there's that approach, which is has been successful in some water bodies, but hasn't yet really been able to, to solve the we predict hasn't been predicted to solve the
that's the big question. That's a huge question. Um, the, I know the, the problem with leaving it where it is is that while it might be stagnant, it's not isolated. You can cap it from the top, but you know where you can move laterally, it can move with the ecosystem. Thank you. 